What's up guys? Today I'm gonna to be taking you through the landmine hip thrust setup, execution, and some of my best tips on how I actually program these. I've shared these a bunch of times. I've probably about three, four years ago was the first time I shared these alongside landmine um, donkey kickbacks or quadruped hip extensions as they've been known as as well. And I'm not saying I invented them. Someone probably came up with them beforehand. Um, but I popularized both those exercises um, and then the likes of Brett Contreras had shared them, which is awesome. So just thought I'd go over a kind of a thorough video on the setup of these, especially because now here's a story. I was actually at the gym yesterday, noticed some girl in the corner actually setting up a landmine hip thrust, um, just kind of thinking, um, you know, how many changes she could have made to that. You know, because it has become a popular exercise, but I don't think everyone knows how it should be properly executed, how it should be set up and how to program it because it can be a slightly awkward exercise. Um, so that's what we're all about today. You notice here, standard landmine setup, okay? And I've got my bench kind of alongside my landmine as well. I'm also gonna be using a pad here, like an AirX balance pad. You can also use like a squat bar pad that kind of squeezes nicely on the end there. I personally prefer these, uh, the bar digs less into hip. And also if you've got a little bit of a belly or a little bit of a pooch you wanna hide, then it kind of sits there nicely, all right? I've got a 10 kg, like a 22 pound plate on there at the moment, um, you know, load is relative to you. From here, what I'm gonna be doing is getting myself into my standard hip thrust setup. Now, what I always recommend you do with any hip thrust setup is just to practice your hip thrust with body weight alone, just making sure you find the right position where your shins are vertical when you're in that top position and you're feeling that load through your glutes. So you can kind of have a play about in different positions and just find what feels good for you with just your body weight alone. What you can then do is you can then put a marker on the floor as to where your feet go. So you can put like a protein shaker or a, your mobile phone or something like that, just where your feet go, okay? I'm not gonna do that today, but it's a nice way to do it so that when you then roll the bar on, you can reposition your feet next to your marker and you've got the perfect spot every single time. So I'm gonna get this on here, hide my belly, okay? And then I'm gonna roll that bar onto one side. Now, especially if you go, uh, you gotta watch that middle part of the bar. If your setup's wrong, it's probably gonna dig in a little bit more. So just make sure you kind of find that point where it feels good for you, all right? So starting in that top point, find where it feels good with both legs and just get that position where you can just feel that in both butt cheeks from there, okay? Hand up towards the side. Now from there, take that one leg off. So you're only supporting that landmine with one leg now and just hover it up towards the sky, all right? So now chin's down, rib cage is down, abs are on, glutes are obviously firing at this point. And I'm just gonna have one hand just on that bar to support it. Now you can have that one hand on the bar here. You can even have it on the plate. You can even have it on the smaller part of the bar if you want to. And then you've got that other spare arm just out towards the side, all right? So I've got that one leg off. So I'm gonna get all the way down to that bottom position. Chin's tucked, rib cage is down, squeeze my butt and drive through. So all the way down, initiating with my glutes, squeeze, extend my hip, squeeze hard at the top, chin down, ribs down, okay? So I'm focusing on that one leg at a time. Okay, so that's the basic setup. I'm not using momentum to come, you know, driving my knee through just to help with that bar. I'm performing a very focused movement and I'm not allowing that landmine to drop my hip towards one side, okay? So that's the basic setup. Now you can obviously add load as much as you want to. I always say with a lot of people, one of the biggest mistakes I see is actually loading your hip thrust too much to the point where you've got so much load on there, you're just moving the weight rather than actually feeling it in that targeted area, feeling it in your glutes. So get to a point where you can still feel it in your glutes for the tension, but you are also providing you know, progressive overload week in, week out and progressing that exercise. Advantage here, obviously, like with a barbell, you can add like small little donut plates every single week and progress that up. Now, here's a common question that I see. Do you perform all your reps on one side and then all your reps on the other side? Or do you alternate legs? For example, I've seen people put a bench kind of closer in the middle, do one set, say on their left leg, stand up, move the bar all the way to the other side, move the bench all the way back towards the middle and then work their other side. Now, 
when I'm programming, I'm actually largely programming these for my clients, more females in particular, who have one side glute stronger than the other, or one side glute weaker than the other. So the way we're actually programming these a lot of the time is by doing more sets on that weaker side, less sets on that stronger side. So you might be doing, for example, three sets on your weaker left leg, for example, and then only two sets on your stronger right leg. And, then, and that just gives more volume to that slightly weaker side to allow it to catch up. And the, the way I like to program that is to do all of your sets on that weaker side first of all. So for example, I might do three sets first of all on my left leg. Once I finish my three sets, standard rest intervals between let's say three sets of 10, 90 seconds rest in between each, for example, and then change the setup for the other leg so it feels comfortable for my stronger leg and then perform all my sets there, okay? So in total, yes, I've done five sets but I've done three sets all on my left leg, my weaker leg first, and then I've done two sets on my stronger leg. So that's how I prefer to program them. You can, if you prefer, you know, just alternate legs, especially if, um, if both sides are relatively even as far as strength goes. Um, but personally, I don't like to set it up like that. I personally prefer, prefer to load the heck out of them, providing you're feeling that tension on one side, get as much out of the exercise as you can, and then change the setup, switch the other leg, make sure it feels comfortable, make sure it feels good for you, and then go on to the other leg. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video and my little explanation of how to correctly perform landmine hip thrusts and how I tend to program them. If you have any comments, make sure you, you leave them below. Um, otherwise, if you haven't tried them, please do try them. They are a fantastic exercise. I would argue probably the best single leg hip thrust variation out there just because of your capability to load and the comfort from a single leg standpoint. And unlike, for example, a single leg barbell hip thrust, people are a lot more unstable on that single leg barbell hip thrust. So this is a great kind of output exercise if you're looking to grow your glutes. Anyway, thanks for joining me and hopefully you give it a go.